Hello, and welcome to the fourth session in our nutrition education series for people living with diabetes. The topic today is eat well, spend less, and who doesn't want to eat well and save a little money on groceries? With the cost of food these days, eating well while on a budget can be difficult, especially when you add on the additional costs of living with diabetes. Registered dietitian and certified diabetes educator Vidi Agrawal will discuss ways to make your grocery dollar go further while boosting your nutrition and saving money at the checkout. Take it away, Vidi. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vidhi. I'm a registered dietitian and a certified diabetes educator working with the Diabetes Education Program. So in today's session, we'll be talking about how to eat well with diabetes and spend less money. So as you can see on my slide, the topics today include what to do before you step out for grocery shopping. We'll talk a bit about the planning part. Protein planning. We do know the meats, the fish, and the poultry can be expensive part of a grocery items. We'll talk about how to stretch our meat ounce and how to plan around that protein part of a plate. We'll talk about the vegetables, the good picks, and how to save dollars there. In store, what to do when you're actually at a grocery store and how to smart shoply and save some dollars. We'll talk about what to do with leftovers and how to prevent food waste. Food and nutrition is an important element of diabetes management. Clinical practice guidelines from Diabetes Canada state, eating well can be used as a tool or behavior to lower our A1C by almost one to 2%, which is quite um, a good thing. On my screen, I'm showing you the balanced plate method. Uh, this is a simple tool to plan your meal. On that plate, you can see half the plate. It's recommended to fill half the plate with non-starchy vegetables and fruit, quarter of your plate with proteins, and quarter of your plate with whole grains and starchy vegetables. I'll be speaking into more um, into this plate and how to use this for meal planning a bit later on, also in the presentation. But as you can see, the half a plate is vegetables and fruit and protein. And we do know that um, these items can be quite expensive uh, when you're trying to buy them, especially in this economy. Sometimes it is difficult to plan and purchase healthy food. Um, so let's go ahead. And in this video, we'll be showing you some tips and tricks how to spend less when you're going to the grocery store and still be able to eat well. So before you head out for that grocery shopping, it's a good idea to plan your meals ahead. Now, just having a general idea for the whole week um, is a good tip. And when you're doing sitting down and doing that meal plan or menu plan, um, it would be worthwhile to look at the flyers and see what items are on sale. And maybe you would like to include the items which are on sale more in your menus. You can repeat those items um, with different recipes. And once you've made a meal plan, base them around the items on sale, then you might want to break it up into the things to buy. And before going out for shopping, you might want to shop your pantry, your fridge, your freezer first, and tick off the items which you already have in your house. This will prevent you from buying uh, items which are not needed and then items going beyond their best before dates. Talking about best before dates, we will be touching on um, best before dates a bit later on. So always plan ahead before you go out grocery shopping. And it's a good idea not to go hungry when you're grocery shopping. You always tend to buy foods which we don't really need. Protein planning. So if you remember the balanced food plate, it was recommended to fill quarter of a plate with protein. Now what's included in the protein? Protein includes the meats, the poultry, the fish, which are the expensive items, but protein can also include the plant-based protein sources like your lentils, chickpeas, nut butters, tofu, and milk and milk products. So let's start how to stretch a pound of meat. Like I keep mentioning, meats 
are one of the expensive items on a plate. So blending meat with some vegetarian source of protein like kidney beans or lentils can stretch that pound of meat. So you can blend them together to make fillings for tacos, burritos. You can use them for um, making burger patties and chili, for example, chili is a dish which naturally use, uses this blended protein in the form of beans and minced meat. Again, the clinical practice guidelines from Diabetes Canada recommend using plants-based meals or protein more often. Using plants-based protein more often is not only easier on your pocket, they're a great way to manage not only the A1C, which is a blood glucose, but they also help us manage uh, blood pressure and cholesterol. So managing all the three ABCs of diabetes. What's there in the plant-based protein? So the plant-based proteins can include, as you can see on the screen, chickpeas, lentils, kidney beans. They also include tofu and edamame. They include nut butters. And if these foods are not familiar to you, you can look up recipes. Um, there's this great website called unlockfood.ca and I'll be putting that website address in one of the slides later on. On this website, you can explore different recipes. There are videos you can use um, to give you ideas how to use them. The good thing about chickpeas and lentils is they're one third the cost or I think one fourth the cost of meat and half a cup of lentil and chickpeas has a whopping seven grams of fiber, which meat lacks. And when you have foods which are high in fiber and lentils and chickpeas are also very low in glycemic index. So when you have foods which are high in fiber and low in glycemic index, that can help regulate your blood glucose and keep you full for a longer time. Another tip is buy in bulk and freeze for later. So remember we talked about the flyers. So if you see any meat or poultry, any item you use, which is on sale, and if you have the capacity to buy and also the freezer space to freeze it, it's a good idea to buy in larger amounts. Uh, family packs are always less cheaper than smaller amount of meats and poultry. So buy in bulk and then you can freeze them. You can separate them, freeze them in smaller portions to be used later on in the week or month as needed. Again, think beyond the normal box for the protein part of your plate. When you're buying your meats, try to look for the cheaper cuts of meat. Now the cheaper cuts of meat might not be as tender, but you can use them in soups, and stews and using the right cooking method, they can be quite flavorful. Again, milk and milk products are also included in that protein part of your plate. So you can use them um, to give you protein. And when you're buying your milk or milk products, they're always cheaper when you buy again in larger amount. So that four liter bag of milk is much cheaper than buying a carton of milk and you can freeze milk up to three months in your freezer and take it out before you have to use. If you're thinking, you know, that's a big bag and uh, you won't go through it before it goes bad, you can always freeze it. Canned fish. Canned fish can be an expensive way to give you an excellent source of protein because fish also has the heart healthy omega-3s. And the good thing about canned fish is, you know, they have a longer shelf life. They're easier to use. So a tuna sandwich for lunch is a great way to use um, canned fish. And let's not forget the eggs. The humble eggs are quite inexpensive and an excellent source of protein. So when you think about the eggs, you can always think beyond breakfast. You can use eggs in um, frittatas or quiche to be used as a main meal for lunch or dinner. And eggs have excellent biological value protein because they have the amino acids in the egg are of good quality protein. So go ahead and use the eggs. 
So these were a few tips for saving on your protein. Let's talk about vegetables. So bringing you back to that balanced plate, half a plate was recommended to be filled with non-starchy vegetable and fruit. So the non-starchy vegetables include all your vegetables like your broccoli, spinach, onion, tomato, mushrooms, bok choy, lettuce, um, carrots, and so on. So one tip, as you must have noticed, is seasonal vegetables. When you're buying fresh vegetables, buying seasonal is always cheaper. I do know because, um, you know, the berries, if you have noticed in winters, the, the same berries can get so expensive in winters, but in summer when they're locally grown and seasonal, they're much cheaper. Buying frozen vegetables and fruit can save us a lot of dollars. And frozen vegetables and fruits, they can also help prevent food waste because then you're not worried about finishing them quickly because you can use as much as you want. The frozen vegetables and fruits are flash fro frozen. That's a process which ensures that the nutritional value of frozen vegetables and fruit is intact. So don't be worried about uh, using frozen vegetables for the nutritional value, they're as good. When you're buying frozen vegetables and fruits, for fruits, try to buy fruits which are unsweetened. And for vegetables, try to buy just the plain vegetables, not the ones which are seasoned or which have some sauces or gravies added to it. And if there's some vegetables in your fridge, which are which you think are wilted or mushy, you don't have to throw them away. Preventing food waste is a great way to save dollars. And we'll talk more about that a bit later on in the slide. So if you have some, you know, mushy tomatoes, wilted vegetables, you can use the tomatoes to make pasta sauce for later on. You can take all your vegetables, chop them up and make them into a soup or a stew. The bananas, which are overripe or almost going bad, you can chop them up, put them in the freezer and you can use them for muffins later on. The melons can be used, they can be chopped, you can freeze them, you can use any fruit uh, for smoothies later on. So these were a few tips um, for saving on vegetables and we'll talk a bit more about how to buy vegetables in the store and save dollars. So coming back to the balanced food plate. So as you can see on my slide, this is a simple tool which is recommended by Diabetes Canada to plan your meals with diabetes. And again, half a plate is non-starchy vegetable and fruit, which includes all your vegetables and the fruit, uh, the potatoes, the corn, and the sweet potatoes are included in the quarter portion um, of whole grains and starchy vegetables. And then we have the quarter plate of protein. We briefly talked about um, how you can shop on a budget within each food group. A quick recap for vegetables, buying frozen vegetables and fruits, buying the ones which are in season and also buying canned uh, vegetables. You can rinse out the can and you can buy low sodium uh, canned vegetable. For the protein, we had talked about a lot of options um, how to save in that part of your plate. So blended proteins of meat and beans, using a lot more vegetarian options like your chickpeas, lentil, kidney beans, experimenting with newer proteins like tofu, edamame, and of course, using eggs and canned fish. The quarter of a plate is also recommended for whole grains. So let's talk a bit about how to save in that area. Now, whole grains like pasta, brown rice, quinoa have a long shelf life. So you can always buy in bulk when these items go on sale. You can buy them in bulk and keep them in the pantry to be used later on. If you have the freezer capacity, you can always buy uh, larger packs of bread 
and put them in the freezer because the bread um, is more fresh if you freeze it and then you can take it out as needed, a slice or two. Also buying less processed grain can help us save money. So for example, for breakfast, rather than buying instant oatmeal, which has cinnamon and brown sugar, maybe you want to buy a large bag of uh, oat flakes and um, season them or, you know, you can add your own fruit, you can add your own your cinnamon powder or any flavor you want. It's always cheaper than buying the quicker and processed cream and also much healthier. So here we are talking about eating well as well as saving dollars. And remember there's a glass of water. So the drink of choice with the meal is always water. Okay, so now we had a meal plan. Oh, we have made a list, we are ready to go grocery shopping. So what to do when you're in store? When you're in store, when you're looking for your fruits and vegetable, try to buy, there is a section where some of the imperfect vegetables and fruit, you know, which are not in the best of shapes are sold at a lower cost. And also um, some of the reduced vegetables. Now they might be a bit mushy and not as fresh, but if you're planning to use it the same day or the next day, they're always a great buy, they're at half the price. And you can also cut them up and freeze them to be used later on. Expiry dates and best before dates. Research shows a huge amount of food is wasted in household, uh, in every household based on the best before dates. Now the best before dates are not an indicator of food safety before the date or after the date. Best before dates are indicator that that particular product is its optimum flavor, shape, texture, and nutritional value at that date or before that date. So even after the date, if the food is stored properly and in the right way, it's still okay to consume. It completely depends, it's your judgment. So what I'm trying to say here is, we don't have to throw the food out just because it's past its best before date. Use your judgment. The food is still okay to use beyond the best before date. Now expiry dates are different. Expiry dates are used on only certain products, for example, infant formula, and yes, the food beyond the expiry date needs to be thrown because it's not safe to be consumed. So think before throwing out a food which is beyond the best before date. Use your judgment. If it looks okay to eat, it probably is. Many stores honor um, coupons, sale coupons from other stores. They price match. So it might be worthwhile to go to to pick up your flyers and the coupons and go to the store and see if they price match um, the sale items. I already mentioned about the imperfect produce um, and also the produce on reduce. You can buy them, chop them and freeze them for use later on. Again, stick to that grocery list. Planning can be an important way to save um, money on uh, meal prep. Uh, meal planning, sorry. So remember the grocery list and stick to it. That way you will only buy the items which are needed. Okay, so let's talk about leftovers. Sometimes when we cook meals, we have leftovers. Even when we go out to eat, we might have leftovers. Leftover can be a great way to save time when you're on the go and also to save your dollars. If you take the leftovers and freeze them in the right way, they can be there for the next meal. So when, whenever you have uh, leftovers, make sure you put them in smaller containers, airtight containers, put the date, expiry date, or not expiry, put the date 
they need to be used up before and you can freeze them. I always um, tell my clients, it's a great idea to buy in bulk and also to cook in bulk. So when you're cooking, uh, batch cooking, like I say that. So if you're cooking in larger batches, then you can always take smaller portions and freeze them for later on. This will not only save time and energy, but you will have a meal handy in your freezer uh, when you're on the go. And that might prevent you from, you know, ordering a takeout or buying foods from outside. Fridge clean out Fridays. Now, one day of a week, you might want to look in your fridge and freezer and see which foods are uh, coming close to going bad and you might want to clean up your fridge. So all your leftover vegetables, you know, the wilted onions, the tomatoes, the carrots, you can do a quick stir fry with them with the leftover meat in your freezer, anything you want to finish before the next round of groceries, or you can use them in soups and stews and sauces um, for later on. So clean up your fridge, Use up all the items which are there before you go ahead and buy a fresh uh, lot of grocery. So leftovers, you can always use them up, up and prevent food waste. Talking about food waste. So we did talk about those best before dates. That's a great way to prevent uh, food waste and again, Sticking to the grocery list, buying only the items which you need. You know, men, I did mention to buy items on sale, but just because the item is on sale, it's not a good idea to buy it. Only if it fits into your meal planning, your household meal planning, or you're going to be using that. When um, buying foods, it's a good idea to discuss with family when you're making that meal plan, knowing what people like and buying only items which your family will eat. That again can prevent food waste. So we have, again, a lot of resources available in the community when you're trying to eat healthy, cook on a budget. It does come with time. You will get more familiar with which grocery stores are cheaper and less frills. You will find which foods, you know, there's a cycle when foods go on a sale. So you'll get more familiar and more savvy in how to save your dollars. We mentioned about, you know, using different foods, um, maybe lentils, tofu, and cooking at home can be a great way to save money with the eating out has become so expensive these days. And if you're wanting to learn how to cook more at home, you can always visit your local library or we have, if you have access to the internet, there's so many wonderful websites available. On my screen, um, I've listed three websites. The last one, the Unlock Food is a it's, it's a website by the Registered Dietitians of Canada. It's very credible. All the information is credible there. And they have amazing recipes which are healthy. You can even, um, if you're typing diabetes friendly recipes, they have menu plans and they have recipes. And when you click on the recipe, they will actually link you to a video showing you how to make it. And then you can actually see the nutrition breakdown. Uh, in terms of carbohydrate and protein. So check that website out. It's quite interesting. Also, we have listed two websites. Spend with, Bunny, uh, sorry, Spend with Pennies and Budget Bites. These can help you again to smart shop. With the growing, with the rising prices of grocery and just the cost of living, there might be times where we might be struggling with food insecurity. So there are a lot of resources in the community. You can visit the local food bank. I find when you go to the local food bank, you can fill up on staples like your bread and rice and pasta. And 
you can save your food dollars to buy more of the expensive produce which you don't get at the food bank like your vegetables, frozen vegetables, fresh vegetables, and your protein and milk. There are a lot, lot of local soup kitchens where you can drop by for a meal and there's always, there'll be some kind of a cooking uh, demonstration happening. There are faith-based organizations locally where you have uh, drop-in centers for meals. And uh, I will highly recommend checking out the local community health centers. There you have um, free cooking classes and also taking part in the community kitchens. So in community kitchens, you can grow your own vegetables and uh, food and you can use them. So that is all done by the government. They, they give you areas where you can grow your own fruits and vegetables and use for um, your cooking later on. So these were some of the resources to help you um, if you're experiencing food insecurity. So the bottom line, getting being a savvy shopper is increasingly important these days. Healthy eating doesn't have to break your budget. It just takes planning. So making that menu, looking at those flyers, you might want to set aside a time in the week to plan for eating well, to planning your menu, grocery shopping, cooking ahead. You know, you might just reserve a couple of hours on Sunday to do a big batch of cooking and put it in your fridge to be used later on for the week. So you always have some healthy food available to you. Make a list, grocery list, and stick to it. And again, think about preventing that food waste. Thank you very much. Uh, for listening to the presentation and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thank you.